What's going on guys? In today's video, we're talking secrets and remnant from the ashes. Now, this video is not all me. This is a compendium, a collage of everything that I've seen online that people have told me about, that I found in game, my friends have found in game. I wanted to get it all in one place, especially for those of you that are coming into the game for the first time. There are so many videos out there that are just onesie twosies. So let's get everything possible into one video. Now, as I go through this, there's going to be some differences. Things are going to spawn differently for you. Things are going to be, uh, handle differently depending on your boss battles and what your choices are. You'll see those as you get to like the Petrified Mall or the Spitfire SMG. But the big thing to keep in mind is things will spawn differently. You will not have some of the same areas that we talk about in here. That's why we give a general overtone when it comes to where things are going to spawn. You're going to hear like this spawns in the late metro area. This spawns between the subway and the artery dungeon because it can literally spawn anywhere in that area. It's not in one specific spot, which one makes the game interesting, but two also makes it frustrating for a direct guide to doing something. Either way, let's get to it. And if there's any secrets that you guys know about that aren't in this guide, drop them in the comment section below so we can create an all-in-one source for anybody looking to take their remnant character to the next level. All right, guys, let's get this list started. First up is the Drifter's Armor. Now, this is unlocked after you've completed the tutorial, you've selected your archetype or your class, and you've unlocked the what they call the Red Eye, which is the giant crystal in Word 13. Go to that crystal and you want to go to the Founder's Hideout. So once you teleport to the Founder's Hideout, run up the staircases until you reach the bunker. Now, when you reach the bunker, you're going to see a table in the middle of the room that's going to have a Word 13 key card, a consumable, and behind that table is going to be a wooden bookcase against the wall. Destroy that wooden bookcase with a melee attack, and there is a hole in the wall behind it. Crouch, walk through there, run all the way to the very end, up a couple staircases, and you'll see the drifter's armor sitting on a mannequin. Pick this up, and you got yourself a nice stamina reduction gear set. Next up is the submachine gun and the Elder Knowledge trait. The submachine gun is a fantastic weapon to start the game off with. It's a rapid fire weapon, obviously submachine gun that deals a considerable amount of damage. And the Elder Knowledge trait is great because it increases all of your experience gained. So remember that Word 13 key card you picked up back in the Founder's Hideout? We'll head back to Word 13 and from the crystal, head down the ramp, take a right, go through the hallway and continue through the room with the vendors Reggie and Ace. Back in the corner, there is a staircase that heads down to the basement. You want to go down until you hit B2, which is Ward 13. On Ward 13, you'll see a security door that requires a key card to get in. Use the Ward 13 key card and open up the doors. Make sure to grab the Tome of Knowledge that's off to the right. It has a blue beam. Now, continue going down the main hallway until you hit the second to last door on the left, Dr. Santiago Isasu's office. There's a tape recorder sitting on the desk. If you click that, that unlocks the Elder Knowledge trait, which is an experience buff trait. Now, the last door on the left has a fuse laying on the ground. It's a red beam. Make sure to pick that up and head out of the ward. Uh, make sure to clear it. There's some consumables that are in there as well. But what you want to do is you want to exit B2 and head downstairs to B3. Once you get downstairs to B3, you'll see a fuse box on the wall before you get to the security door. Use the fuse there and then use the lever. That'll return power to B3. You'll be able to go to the security door and use the key card. Open the door. Once the door is open, head back to the fuse box and shut the fuse off and go back through the security doors in B3. And once you exit the security doors, take an immediate left. You'll see a giant fan that's behind a fence. Go through the stopped fan and there's a hole blown out in the wall. Go back there and what you'll see is a Ward 13 master key as well as some other consumables. Return to B2 uh, back upstairs and run all the way to the end. You're gonna go through a red room with the TV and you're gonna end up at a staircase. At the end of the staircase is a locked steel door. Your character will try to open it, it'll be locked. Use the Word 13 master key. 
Once you do that, the door opens up and you'll have the submachine gun sitting on a desk waiting to slay a little bit of root. The pocket watch is a secret amulet that is currently one of the more powerful amulets in the game because of its ability, which restores stamina over time and reduces your stamina costs, which is fantastic, especially in late game when you're constantly running, dodging, and you have to expend a lot of that stamina. So to get the pocket watch, you have to find the NPC named Mudtooth. I've almost always found him immediately after your first major dungeon. I had to fight Mauler. I've seen other people fight Shroud, but he moves a a little bit, but for the most part, he's at the same place, which is Mudtooth's hideout, and it's one of those checkpoints that you almost always hit. Now, the pocket watch is something that's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of determination because you have to go talk to Mudtooth and literally just keep asking him to tell you stories. Continue to say, no, tell me more, all the way until the very end, and he says a, a line that's something like, you know, you've been so kind to me listening to my words, no one's done that for a long time, here's this pocket watch, it was supposed to be for my son, but I don't think he's ever coming back, so you take it. And that's how you get the pocket watch. This next one has to be done in a certain order to unlock both secrets. But the first thing you want to do is you want to try to find the mad merchant in junk town on earth. Now, this is for the twisted mask, which is a root kind of bark tree looking mask, which is really, it's badass. One of my favorite looking pieces of gear in the game, but you have to beat the mad merchant. So find junk town on earth. And like I said, you either have this or you don't. Um, I've seen some people, they never ran into junk town. Other people did. So it's something to keep in mind. However, you have to start a fight with the mad merchant and you have to do this by carefully picking dialogue options. Make sure you choose. Are you okay? Are you a scavenger? What's with the mask? The mask is doing something to you. Let me see the mask now. He gets aggressive and he starts attacking you. Now, since he is another survivor, he has the same kind of kit out you do. He has a shotgun, he has a pistol, and he has a melee weapon. So make sure to be careful, eliminate him, and once you kill him, you'll pick up the twisted mask. Once you have the twisted mask, you can get the bark skin trait. Now, the bark skin trait is from talking to the wailing tree. If you don't have the mask and you go talk to the Wailing Tree, which is in the Wailing Wood zone, which comes after defeating the first boss, then the tree speaks an incoherent language and you can't understand it, therefore you can't get the Barkskin trait. If you wear the mask and you go talk to him, you'll actually be able to talk to it and you'll get the Barkskin perk. Afterwards, you can kill the tree and gain the Twisted Idol, which is an interesting kind of combat thing. When you do damage to the tree, it starts spawning a bunch of enemies, a lot of elites as well. Um, I seem to have a lot of like the shaman type elites that would put shields on things. And if you don't do damage to the tree consistently, it'll actually heal itself back up. So continue to DPS the tree, clear ads, DPS tree, clear ads, all that type of fun stuff. And afterwards, you'll get the Twisted Idol Secret Amulet. Next up is the Sniper Rifle. Now the Sniper Rifle is incredibly easy to get. It's literally just going left instead of going right. Once you get to the Church of the Harbinger, you're gonna find the Root Mother. After that encounter, the wall is going to collapse and it's going to be the obvious way to continue the story. Instead of going through that wall, if you take a step back and you're facing the Root Mother's throne, off to the left, there is another hallway. Take that hallway all the way to the very end until you see a doorway with some pipes along the wall. Take a left down that, and you're gonna go down a ramp, and it's going to take you to the basement. Once in the basement, go all the way down, go down the stairs, drop off the side, however you wanna do it, but you'll see some lockers with some pallets in front of them. Destroy the pallets, and you should see the purple beam regardless, but hidden behind those in the locker is the sniper rifle. The sniper rifle is a one round per magazine sniper, but it does considerable damage, so if you can land shots, it'll be one of the better weapons in the game for you. Next up are a couple rings. The first thing is a tarnished ring that you find within an earth dungeon. Now this isn't an equipable item, but it is something that Reggie, the item vendor back in Ward 13, um, tells you about if you ask him about his story. He mentions losing a ring, losing a memento, something precious. This then prompts you to give him the tarnished ring, and then he'll give you uh, some scrap along with the scavenger trait, which increases all of your scrap gain. So if you're running low on scrap, you wanna be money bags, this is a great trait to have. Next up, is another one that's done in specific order, the root circlet and the braided thorns. I found these in the Marrow Pass, but as you get there, 
you're clearing the dungeon, you're doing things, you're gonna see these like big beating hearts that look like they're covered in roots. Don't destroy them yet. Get all the way to the end of the dungeon and you're gonna see an NPC. It's like a cultist, a worshiper. Talk to him and as a reward, he'll give you the root circlet. If you go back and destroy those thumping hearts, which are slight events, um, they're gonna summon some enemies for you to kill as you're trying to destroy the nexus heart, um, is what it's called. After all of them are destroyed, go back and that cultist will be hostile towards you and he'll shout, you shouldn't have done that. Kill him and then it'll give you the braided thorns ring, which is fantastic because this ring increases all critical damage done for each enemy slain. Next up is the ring of evasion. Now the issue with the ring of evasion is like its name, there's nowhere particular that this thing spawns. Just know that it's found on earth near the end of the zone, near the end of the storyline for the zone. It's going to be near apartments or in the subway. Next up is the heart seeker ring. Now the heart seeker ring boosts all damage dealt to unaware enemies, which is great for hunters. And it can be found anywhere on earth in the later metro area or the zone right after it. So it's the area with heavy buildings and where you encounter the enemies that have guns, things like that, where they'll start firing at you from a range. The Magnum Revolver is a high powered hand cannon that has a roaming prerequisite. You need to find the strange coin somewhere on earth and bring it back to Ace in Ward 13. She's the individual that you help defend the reactor with. And once you do that, you can actually get the Magnum Revolver. Like I said, it's one of the highest damaging weapons in the game, especially in the pistol slot. The strange coin itself can be found near the first dungeon drop next to a corpse. Alternate coin locations are the dungeon between West Side and the Artery, but this changes for everyone. So keep your eyes peeled for a corpse with a orange beam next to it. After you get the coin, head back to Ace. She'll tell you a story about a guy named Les, and then she'll give you the Magnum Revolver. Next up is the Spitfire SMG or the Smolder Sword. Now the Spitfire SMG, you have to defeat Singe World Boss, which is a giant dragon, without destroying his tail. This will give you the blazing heart and you go back and you can craft a Spitfire gun. The Spitfire gun is pretty good, um, deals a de decent amount of damage and the mod's pretty cool. It basically it's a flamethrower, um, so that's always nice. To get the Smolder Sword, you need to kill Singe, but destroy his tail first. This will give you Dragon Links as a resource and then it'll allow you to craft the Smolder Flame Sword. This is also true if you're facing the Int. Now, like I said, Singe versus the Int, these are randomized. So you're not gonna get Singe every single time or the Int every single time. And if you wanna get the opposite, you need to join another player's game or reroll the map. Just like Singe, the Int will drop specific things depending on how you fight him. If you blow off his legs, then he's gonna give you the Petrified Maul, which is a massive hammer melee weapon. If you do not destroy his legs, he'll give you the Spore Bloom Shot shotgun. If you've already killed him by breaking his legs or not, you can join another player's game and get the opposite. To unlock Elzen's band, which is a ring, you need to scavenge the monolith area in Rom. One of the houses contains a corpse with Elzen's band next to it. Now, just like everything else, this will be randomized, so happy hunting. Next up is the Osseus armor. Now, to get this, you're going to have to head over to the Wasteland Merchant area on Rom, and there's an NPC. He has a cloth over his face. Uh, when you talk to him, you're going to have a set of dialogue options. You'll be able to purchase secrets from him. So continue to say, I'd like to do business with you. What kind of secrets do you know? Tell me a secret. You're going to pay him scrap for secrets. And eventually after you exhaust the options, he's going to allow you to do business with him. Click on, let me see your wares. And this will allow you to purchase the Osseus armor items. So this one's not really much of a secret. It's more like the pocket watch. It's about tenacity and sticking with the dialogue options. The void armor is near the monolith checkpoint on ROM. You have to solve a puzzle in order to open a hidden passage, which leads you to a hidden room that lets you craft a hidden armor. Now, the way this works is after you get to that checkpoint, you'll see a metal plate on the ground. It's obvious it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, there's all these other stone plates around it, and there's a one metal block. So stand on the metal block and step off in one of the four directions. You stepped off on the correct plate. The plate will actually sink into the ground a little bit and you have to continue guessing the right plate. The plates will continue to sink if you select the correct ones. If they all bounce back up, it'll actually summon enemies that you'll have to slay. And then after they're dead, you can start the whole thing over again. It's a big thing of trial and error. It's different for each person, but once you get it figured out, the room will open up and you'll be able to go get that armor. So the next one is the Wastelander Flail. Now I actually haven't found this one myself but you're gonna to need to complete a dungeon. 
Some people say in ROM, some people say they found this on Corvus, but once you find yourself in the dungeon, you'll actually have a curse applied to you, which constantly drains your life. Um, you have to kill enemies in order to restore your health, which is kind of a cool mechanic, but once you complete the dungeon, the curse is actually removed and you'll get to go into a room that contains the Wastelander flail. Frankly, I'm really upset that I haven't found this one yet because it sounds and looks like a really cool weapon from what I've seen. Next up is what many consider to be the most powerful weapon in the game, and that is the Ruin Rifle. Now to get the Ruin Rifle, you need to travel to the Undying Throne in Rom and refuse to give the beast's heart to the Undying King. And he's gonna consistently ask for it, continue to tell him no, he gets pissed, and you actually have to end up killing the Undying King, which will give you the Undying Heart. You head to Ward 13, you can craft yourself the Ruin Rifle. So guys, this wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But like I said towards the beginning, if you know of any secrets that we didn't talk about in this one, drop them in the comment section below. I know there's tons more out there that either we haven't discovered or I just don't know about, but let's get to sharing to make our characters as best as they possibly can be. And if you guys are looking for more Remnant from the Ashes content, action RPG content, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. And as always guys, I will talk to you next time.